Hello, everybody. How on a day? How we doing? Yeah. Oh, my God. Let's see. It may feel it matter. No, no. Nah, forget me feel it for this one. Forget me feel it. They don't hold up. You know, I need me feel it fight now. Nah. Elite in fighting. That, the same thing that's what do to Buari campaign. You know, the same thing that's what do to Buari campaign with the then president Jonathan. Now, the same thing Amy Feli tried to do to. Now, the same thing Amy Feli do to Tinubu campaign. You know. So this one are elite elitist in fighting. Yes, you know Nigerians are Nigerians pay the price for their fight as usual. Now we suffer. Now we the queue for ATM. Now we don't see money. Now we don't do any. And I don't want to talk the matter again. Because if we now go back to election time, I show now. The matter how it be. I paint the picture and I show now many times where the elite of Nigeria, you know, use their power to make us suffer. So that one, uh, that one aside, when I see that Suki no come out, the Buhari leave president, he still did itself. If there is nothing, he still did it. So the law works, <laughs> but justice doesn't work. Oh. I just know that one. The law works, but justice doesn't work. I don't really touch on him. I feel matter. I don't tell him. I say they go lamb. I don't tell him that one. Long time. I've been want to do this for subsidy live. You know, then I felt seriously sick. You know, if that looks, I don't even shave on my beer beer. As I begin to get myself from the road, go up to cement office, shave all that panty, come off my beer beer. Because that panty, see, they might be a beer, some hair will grow there. You know, the one will follow me, go, the one will grow. I, oh, nah. It's time, it's time, it's time. You know, I go shave all that panty be back of mud first. Yeah, I you first start afresh. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. You know, so as I shave out a part of my healing process, I should never did one hundred percent. My guest show today for Rome, so I know if you play, I can't fuck around. Get me, yeah, yeah, yeah. But pretty soon, I'll get back to my usual look and my usual self. But I don't touch my hair for back, oh, that one no more. Agbara po, Agbara ti po ju. So I know if you come out that one. My sister is in the building. Motu, what's up? It's good to see you and your fat self. <laughs> uh, my sister don't turn to a heavy duty. Hey, you know what I know if you talk for us? Now on a one yash, beam, you know, get off for like three days. So anyway, anyway, uh, so I make post about the whole point why I won't make for now. I made a post. We say when I still never learned. See, the elite of Nigeria and the and their employees 
the so-called professionals of Nigeria will continue to sabotage the people. You have no friends, you know, you have no friends. So when I tell them, you know, I, I make the post, I say, where's the outrage? Then the usual agent come say, wait, see, tell me an outrage means say, I won't make Nigerian people go they born and scatter everywhere. First of all, I'm the only anybody will know me where where they follow my life will tell me say me and she won't they tell anybody anything about uh, protest anymore. You know, if I start time, hmm. if I don't start time, hmm, I no sent. But on this issue, you know. To be outraged means to live a revolutionary life. If you live a revolutionary life, since not like protests, every move you make will be a protest against the system. Not be gathering for Togate or Jota. Nothing will change the system. We must move every day in protest against this system. Your movement must be in protest. I keep telling you, you must stand your ground. You must stand where, where. And you must stand on the side of the people every time you try to make decision. And yeah, you will pay for it. You will lose things because of it. But we're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for the future. The way those in the past did it for us. You know, the way those in the past did it for us. But before I even get chance, given I said they don't give now on our own, at the look social media, I say who they talk, one person are good, one person, everybody just talking about. I said, what do you consign people inside this discord? What do you, you know, we, we should. Oh, my man. Oh, my man. Anyway. Before we kick up the live officially, officially, I don't tell them I say, you know, you get what they do doing now. So, who say she will put in no way? Who say she will put in no way? <laughs> ah, who say she will put in no way? You know, I mean, like, seriously, seriously. Now go taste tata. We she tochi tochi shankai shevi and to. I be I I don't know if you pronounce this this your own handle or you hard for me. Ah, we she tevi why bazaar? Ah, wait. Who be this Mosaso two? We say no way. And I will bounce you from this life. You are, you are out of the life. You are out. You are out. You are out. You know, it's, 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 that joke is too much. Uh, I just deflate. Carry yourself. They go away. This is democracy. Why no way to almost 50 way? I don't win you. I don't win you. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Now, welcome. Hello, everybody. Let's go. Let's do this. You know. Back in 2012, you know, the big subsidy protests were happened for 2012, you know, about 11 years ago. I mean, don't tell to 2012, you know, god damn. You know, 11 years ago, Ashwaju himself, you know, he wrote an article about false subsidy. I go put the article for background. You know, uh, you know show, you know show well for this IG this thing. Let me see my stand on subsidy petrol remover by Tinobu. I and I go like read now some of the things we in talk in 2012 about subsidy. You know, I go read now some of the things we talk for 2012 about subsidy. 
And this is not an indictment on him. I'm not trying to use it to indict him. I'm not trying to use it to say... Uh, is wrong or is right. I'll do the revolutionary thing for you. We'll try the revolutionary way. Because the revolutionary way is to learn. Revolution is all about learning. Anybody will tell you revolution is violence on the streets, breaking this one, looting, all this. Revolution is truly about learning. The more you learn, the more you become conscious. You see, when consciousness is in action, consciousness in action, that is revolution. That is the African CIA. Consciousness in action. That is the Nigerian C. That is the African CIA. You feel me? As motherland people, we act unconsciously. We act unconsciously. We let other people think for. We let other people think for now. Then when they think for now, then they tell you to act for them. They think for you, and then you act for them. That doesn't make sense, man. That's the wrong way. That's the wrong way. You yourself must be conscious. You yourself must know what you are doing. Hmm? You must know what you are doing. Because, and this is my problem with the Nigerian professionals yet again. This is my problem with the Nigerian professional class. Always, I have a problem with these people. I do. I can't deny it. I can't lie. I have a problem with the Nigerian professional class. They are the most myopic, self-centered, selfish, small professionals in the world. They are, their ambition, their dreams, their vision is so small. Because the ambition and dreams of those they align with, who, who are the rich, so small yesterday a friend of mine was telling me you know about floyd mayweather which is you know we have to, the global african this not be african for africa alone when i say the african elite and african professionals i'm talking about all of them globally from floyd mayweather stacking baking bag for his step how many times has jeff bezos showed the poor white people how many things he has in his house how many times does he do that to his own people but because rich africa these elites that the professionals look up to they are so small in the grand scheme of things so tiny in their mind you can they, they don't program them so if you give any african elite if you like give them 15 billion now which you go buy they find now waiting you go buy defined you know we, i mean even even up to to dangote we, we we can we can we can see here and i would give me a second we can sit here all day all evening you know asking ourselves to say, should be dangote build refinery Brothers and sisters, go and investigate who owned the refinery. If Naim be that too true, you know. We'll get back to that later. We'll get back to all that on this live. You know. So as I talk the go, the main reason I want to read his stance is for, for one reason and one reason only. You know, and uh, even Uncle Dele Alake who is the president's uh, main spokesperson today, somebody I'm extremely close with, close to him. And you will know what I'm saying here because he's a communicator. From this article 10 years ago to where the president stands today is a complete 180. I Means a complete different, is a change. 
So, it begs the question, what has changed in the president's mind? Which don't change for Tinubu mind to change the ideology, complete 180. I'm not saying, say, what don't change is right or wrong, but we, the people, deserve to know what he has found out in this period. We may come, make this complete 180. Because as president, Shibi is also father to the young people, all the young people of Nigeria. He's a father to all the nation. So if you are going to make this kind of U-turn, I feel it is fatherly. Even more than official, it is fatherly for him to tell his children why. To educate the children why. Because in that education comes a development in our consciousness. A development in our consciousness. A, develop in our, a development in our consciousness will help us make better decisions as Nigerian young people. But we didn't get any of that. Just the 180, bam. And, you know, that for me is a real, uh, it's a real, how will I put it? It's a real disservice. It's a real disservice. Because as young people, yes, we also have the right to know these things. We do. We do have a right to know them. At the common moment, I know this, I did try to find one thing where I want to share. I did try to quickly find one thing because now my next point where I want to take make for this live. Because maybe we need to open your people's eyes more. Maybe the one who don't do never reach, you know. So let's 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 try from another angle. Because as we as we continue as a nation, what is this? Aha. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, the the Mona Novex. Mona Novex. So the main issue that they've given the main reason and excuse, still same thing Jonathan said, and the exact same thing where Jonathan talked with this. But we all know that these things are not true. You want to remove subsidies so that Nigeria can have money to do it. The removal of subsidy will not, they will not automatically bring money to do anything for Nigerian people. We must remember that this diesel subsidy was removed. What have we benefited from the removal of diesel subsidy? What have we benefited from the removal for, of kerosene subsidy? Nigerians have benefited nothing. Let's go back. Let's go back very well. Let's go back very well. Mm? Let's go back very well to 1992, 1991, and the introduction of SAP in Africa. Structural Adjustment Program. Structural Adjustment Program. Before 1991, everything in Nigeria was subsidized by the government. Everything in Nigeria was subsidized by the government. Transportation, education, housing, uh, uh, petrol, food, uh, uh, 
health, especially health care. Health care was heavily subsidized. You know, it was social. Structural adjustment program, like the IMF program, where they bring, we make them remove Buhari the first time with that. We Abiola pick for coup. But we won't be democratic president. Well, he was a CIA agent. You know, I keep telling Nigerians that most people you look up to are your enemies. Abiola was not about a CIA agent. Hell bent on destroying Nigeria if he enter power. Hell bent. You know, on carrying on new, new liberal, new colonialist policies, because I tell rich there, and if he was trying to rebel, it was too late. That's why they get up. You get me? Go and look at his company, ITT, the company that made him. Go, go and look at what that company did to the governments of South America. How many governments that com company removed? And it's not a shame that when that company got to Nigeria, we said, if we won't do, but they come out, shagari, come out, shagari, come out, buari, come. Go and look at ITT. It is not even a hidden secret. It's not a secret. It is not hidden. ITT is an open secret as a American CIA front globally. Hmm? So, they removed all the subsidies from our life in the, in the early 90s in Nigeria. It was called the Structural Adjustment Program. They don't go fit really, really remember that because they don't go talk him for news. They don't go analyze that issue. With the removal of all this subsidy, we were promised that all that money that they save from health care, all the money they will save from not helping us with our health care, all the money they will save from not helping us with our education, all the money they will save from not helping us with our transportation, from not helping their people with housing, from not helping their people with that government should just leave the people, let the market control the people. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> and no African leader asked these people we come and say, why you know you let the same market control on our own people? The same people telling you that have the most subsidized economies in the world, the most subsidized economies in the world. except maybe the United States. But even at that, they still have Section 8 housing. They still have Section 8 housing. They might not subsidize the health care, but they have health insurance. Subsidy for health for rich people and people that work for them. That work for them. But in Nigeria, you go with the work for them. Where you go with get, where's the health care? It doesn't exist. So all this money that they promised to save in structural adjustment program, what did it turn out to mean in our lives? It destroyed our lives in Africa. Poverty skyrockets for Nigeria, all over the African continent. All 52 governments of Africa, if, I didn't, if, I, if I'm not missing, at least all the governments of Sub-Saharan Africa, because I don't really follow North African politics too much. All the governments of Sub-Saharan Africa took that uh, policy, the Structural Adjustment Program policy. <laughs> Why he say SAP leads to SAPA? Or will not be lie. <laughs> or will not be lie. So, none of those things you know, before our farmers, hmm, they could grow whatever they want. Nobody had to go and buy it from them. The government made sure that they sold everything they grew. And the one where they know if sell, the government bought it. That was how they assisted farmers. All those things was cancelled. All 
all those things was cancelled. What was the benefit in the lives of the Nigerian people? One of the main thrusts in 2012 was that we no trust our government again. We no trust to now say that we'll use the money we'll not save. You know, we no trust to now. Why should we trust you? After all these years, all the money that don't anyway, people understand that point. We shall, we didn't trust the government enough to say you are going to use the money that you have saved well. And that sentiment is still true today. That sentiment is still true today. Now I want to save money. <laughs> but Ampon is still open. I repeat, we want to save money in Nigeria. But Amcon, a rich people subsidizing company, a company that only subsidize, that only exists to subsidize the excesses of the rich people of this country. If Nigerians have they paid us any government looking for money in Nigeria, hmm? must first of all close Amcon and demand the debt to be repaid from the same people. Most of the people whose name are on that Amcon list are the same foil importers. The same people running the oil companies, running all these so-called masters of industry in Nigeria. Now they are named full anchor. Billions of dollars. Billions of dollars is rotting in Ancon. Dollar was 150 to 1. Hmm? When these people were stealing, were borrowing no, from the banks, they were borrowing without collateral from the banks. Right? Under Jonathan. 50 billion. 100 billion. One guy called Peter Ololo or something. Peter Ololo. Yeah, that was his name, I think. He may loan 101 billion. Now he, he borrowed for bank without collateral. Or by something like give all of them. All this Otegolao, Dangoteo, Elumelunio, all of them, he give them notes. Maybe they go bank. Say they are the master of Nigeria. Any money they need, make bank, they pack, give all of them. Billions of, of dollars. Tens of billions of dollars. I cannot... Omo, Shani, I know she did my life. I beg, help me check how much I'm con they look for. One time, the Amcon people come out say only this was just two, four, two years ago or three years ago. Amcon released the statement that only uh, uh, how many Nigerians, uh, how many of them in each hundred, maybe hundred Nigerians or something or thirty something Nigerians, ridiculously small number were owing over ten trillion, ten trillion in Amcon. Yeah, their own uh, debt in Amcon was 10 trillion naira. 10 trillion. Dr. Tony, 
you i'm going to remove you from this live so you can go to the live that you want to that they are doing solution we we are here see this live is a complaining live this is a complaining and critic li live we no get solution here go to where i'm bouncing you go to where they are giving solution uh, remove from live video confirm big fine media remove from live video confirm anybody talk rubbish here on this one i'm removing you go to where they are doing a solution this not be solution live this is complaining i'm complaining this is a complaining live you know they do solution i don't have solution now the chris must i have solution before i feel say something is wrong i don't remove them anyway ace don't come up ace or the tough don't help me come up with the number see as of 2022 they were owing Amcon 200 trillion naira. 200 trillion naira. Uh -huh. Shane has come up with the this thing. Amcon reported to have about 1.7 worth of assets under litigation across the country as at the period of August 2022. Can you guys see that? Did anybody mention that? Has we ever heard them complaining that Amcon exists? That Amcon is a waste? What is the benefit of Amcon in the life of any Nigerian person that is not a billionaire squandering money in Miami with girls all over the place, buying yacht, buying boats, buying car, buying the house of the blood of the people of Nigeria? Nobody has come to say that Amcon is a waste. They still give Sky Bank 200. Uh, how much did it take bail last 200 billion to bail out Sky Bank? They said they protect the money of the depositor. Depositor, they use taxpayer money, bail out depositor from bank. Okay, the depositor and the taxpayer are they not the same person? Choosing the building in my home. Choosing. <laughs> I didn't know the same person. They say they take depositor money. They say to, to protect the depositor's money, they have to give Sky Bank 200 billion. Nobody go jail. Who? Nobody go jail for wasting the 200 billion. Who? They went to their houses. But the government said to protect the depositor to, so that the depositor no go losing money, they give 200 billion. I ask again, depositor and taxpayer. What, are, what is the difference? Who be depositor? Who be taxpayer? You use tax depositor money, supply depositor back. Then let's go to Pandev. Pandev. We faint. When they hammer up, when they hammer around with the bill way teeth, he faint. Instead of hear the bill way in teeth, he faint. Sorry, now fake faint. He not really faint, but you know, he, he saying faint. <laughs> he say he faint. Do you know how much they were discussing that day? 150 billion dollar. Nine don't loss for NDIC. NDIC. I've been mean, Niger De Delta Development NDDC. Sorry, Niger Delta Development Commission. Did you hear pain? 
Did anybody come out and say, oh, they are wasting? Let's go and find this money. Accountant General of the Federation alone, one person. Accountant General. Now, remember that guy? I mean, I don't forget her now. now. Now don't forget Accountant General Oum. How much is Nigeria losing every day from the corruption of the civil servants? Civil, civil servants. The bureaucracy of the civil service in Nigeria. Accountant General New, Attorney General New, any general, any goddamn body with the day. How much? So let's when they bring this excuse of saving money. It doesn't ring the bell to me. It doesn't make sense to me. Could make sense, see, Mirror Ramen. Because Nigeria itself is, is run on waste. Buhari carry presidential jets, go pack for America, uh, for UK, at 5,000 pounds a day just for parking. How much for the hospital where you stay for almost the whole six months? Have you how many months in day for a uh, UK that year? Hmm? Can we tell? Can we say? Can we quantify? But it is from subsidy first that they must save money. Subsidy is the first saving money. Subsidy is the, because you are the only ones they will take from and you will keep quiet. They know you are the only ones they will take from and you will keep quiet. What they don't sell their entertainers, influencers to distract to now, cut and goods. Once they don't get to now, cut and goods talk for the week. You don't fly, come off on our brain. Hmm? Dungeons and dragons. Mm. Dragons coming to fucking eat and burn all of us alive. And the dungeon that we're going to fall inside. Don't come off on our brain immediately. So now we are supposed to, they don't tell us, say, Dangote refinery hmm? would solve the market. The market will solve the problem. Once Dangote refinery kick off. Whoa! First of all, there is no such thing as Dangote refinery. There's no such thing. Uh, guys, now they hear me. How am I going to show this thing I want to show on this slide now? Hmm? How am I going to do this thing I want to do in this life? How? Anyway, let's do it this way. Maybe you can see from my other phone. So this is the breakdown. I'm not going to look and wait. This is the breakdown. This company... owns 70 percent this company is called i 
But say I will open the thing for my for back of this thing we could not see. I will share the screen, but it no work. Oh, oh, you can't see with the tiny screen. Not be lie, not be lie. Let me first of all end this one. You are right. Stop sharing. So maybe on the big screen, and I go switch my camera around. So, this is the company. We're able to get our hands on their corporate governance document. The company, <laughs> I don't know if you like for now. I don't see one single name inside this thing. You know, but they talk well about themselves, where they are from, but. I want to show you the country that came together to exactly. So see. So this is their shareholding. Subsidiaries of the company. I know the Nigerian flag there. This is the com this are the countries that put up the capital. These are the country, companies that put up the capital and are the shareholders and are the shareholders. I don't see Nigerian flag here. And this company claims to own this company claims to own In listed in one of his investments as a subsidiary. So Dangote Refinery Oil Company is a subsidiary of that company of I L I L I L B. I mean I I L L I I B. Mm -hmm. And they own seventy percent. Seventy percent and if me had know anything about foreign investment, foreign investors, is that no foreign investment or foreign investor care about you as a Nigerian. None of them. Care about you as a Nigerian, none of them care about you. So the name of the what the II stands for is International Investment Banking Development Group. IIBDG. So do you think that those ones will be willing? To reduce petroleum price so that Nigerians will not suffer hardship. So, what we need. In Nigeria, as I'll continue to tell you, is outrage. But you see, your outrage cannot be the outrage of running around like idiots on the street shouting and doing it over and over again. The outrage we need is to become revolutionary in our dealings, in our way of life, in our consciousness. We must at some point realize, say, we are the only ones left. We are the only ones left. More or less only the year when they talk again. We are the only ones left. Because there's no solution. I repeat, there's no solution that comes with more hardship for Nigerian people. Yes, we can ask Nigerian people to, to sacrifice. But let's look at it this way. Anybody coming to rule Nigerian people or to govern in Nigeria 
and you truly believe that you are governing on the side of the people of this country, you must see Nigerians as somebody that has been lost in a desert for 60 years. They could not die. They could not die. Let's not be too figurative. <laughs> Let's not be too figurative. Let's be more realistic in the analogy. You must see Nigerians as a lost traveler in a desert that has been lost for three, four days on the brink of death. You don't know go and meet the person and say, ah, that we found you, let's help you, let's help you. Oh, yeah, take this load, carry for us, let's go. Abba. Abba. You see somebody for desert. This person has been lost for three, four years. You see your brink of death. He won't die. You won't help him. Yes, we agree now. You want to help. You tell you know the way back, you know the way to the nearest village where you go get medical treatment. You will put him on your camel now. The sacrifice that see you have to sacrifice, there might not be space for him to sit down like chairman on the camel or anything, but you pack him like you shall not see you can't pack load for your own head. So you'll be following me and the camel. Let's be going. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah. Ah, ah. So, uh, uh, oh, it's tough for me. Only, only, because I don't know. People don't, people don't care about African people, and for me that that hurts my feelings. And I'm not even being dramatic. It hurt my feelings because I know that the number one task of any African person that believes he can help Africans and now has the opportunity to get into power knows that uh, his only duty is the restoration of our dignity his only duty finish is the restoration of the dignity of african people if there is no way you can lighten the load then do your best not to add on top Thirty thousand naira a month is no minimum wage it's free labor you are working for free you're working for free I think take hundred dollar clean yash now. That's seventy thousand. I think take ah, feet. How I many times we take hundred dollar do it? You don't even know. But that's somebody's livelihood. You are paying somebody a seven, a fifteen year old child in McDonald, a McDonald worker that is that you never even finish high school, part time McDonald worker that his job is just to clean table in McDonald. Is not earning that. In fact, is earning the same thing some lawyers in Nigeria are earning. Then these people have to enter transport four hours a day to you people on the island, enter another four hours back to their houses. They don't see their children. They don't. That's why I tell you people that that is what's now waiting slavery be gone gone be that. That is what slavery really is. Now waiting slavery be, be that people think slavery is when you have a chain when they put chain for your neck you they work for somebody farm. Mm, 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 mm. That is not slavery. That is not slavery. Slavery is when another man or another entity controls the quality of your life. When another man, another entity controls the destiny and quality of your life. That's slavery. And that is what they call this useless job that they give all of us that doesn't help that's the slavery because that job determines when you wake up determines when you sleep 
the time is when you can see your friends, the time when you can see your parents, the time when you can see your family, the time when you can go on holiday, the time the amount of time you can spend with your children, the amount of quality time you can have with them, the time is the amount of quality time you can give yourself, the time is where you can go and where you cannot go. Now, if you exchange that for what they are doing as salary in Nigeria, or more, uh, anyway, it's a sad week for me in general. You know, not only on this front, because now I have experience. I'm, I don't enjoy my experience. When I don't send me go panty, you know, you have sent me to jail and back. And when I say you send me to jail, I don't mean that they arrested me for the alleged crime that they say I committed. I've been mean, sorry, alleged misdemeanor. Alleged misdemeanor, where they say I commit. I'm not saying that. I'm saying the outrage people Somebody even went and said, if they don't lock me up, he will begin to slap police all over the place. So all I'm saying is I want to see young people in Nigeria with that kind of ultimatum for other more important things. That if you do not provide life for us, we will not go to work again. If you do not provide good road and transport um, and uh, uh, adequate transportation for us, we will not go to work again. Where is all of that in your energy? Where is all of that in your energy? Because I'd love to see you people give some ultimatums. But lo and behold, Lo and behold, this guy say if you don't go to work, they will starve. You. The guy will say you go to slap police, he no go die. <laughs> she no go die. <laughs> but you still talk up. <laughs> but here you are. You cannot even boycott the oil marketers. Now, you don't work for oil marketers. Do you work? Do all of you work in the oil industry? Nigerians cannot come together in one voice and say, We are boycotting you people. Most of us go to buy for, for NMPC filling station. There are not a lot of NMPC filling station we will kill, but we have been queuing already. You have been queuing already. You have been queuing so that these people can be increasing price of petrol. You have been queuing so that oil marketers can make more money. When will you queue so that you go don't have to spend more money? You can't queue for yourself, but you can queue for oil marketers. Now I've realized the reason why it all boils down to consumerism and the shame of poverty. I repeat, it boils down to consumerism and the shame of poverty. As soon as they increase the price of fuel, what happened? People started making jokes about it. Eh, I just buy this one for my wife. I just buy 700 uh, 70, uh, 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 gen for my wife. A foil for Jane. My wife must do this. I just buy a foil for car. My wife must do this. And they watch the jokes. Then they begin to evolve small, small. Where we go pay now, we can manage it. Because people are ashamed to say they cannot afford it. People are ashamed to say that they cannot buy. In Nigeria, because of the shame of poverty, when this kind of thing happens, it becomes prestigious. 
to be able to afford it. It becomes prestigious. People started taking pictures of their full tank and posting it. You see the way they start to bamboozle the mind of the people and bamboozle the mind of young people. Instead of you to say something is not good, you are trying to let everybody know that you, you are rich enough to afford it. So that's the game. That and that's always been happening. That, now so you don't be since day one. She not Peter's time. Oh pressor. Oh Because there's a part of us that they know due to the shame that is behind poverty. Yeah, now you know if you buy him. Now you know if you buy, no buy. Me, you shut up, me, you come out. That's why nothing can be done. That's why the manager in the bank branch, the general, the branch manager, gone go no big go come and to say, almost everybody close this bank, let's go to our house. Close this bank down, close their bank down for them, let's go to our house. Because him as the general manager, he can't afford it. What does he care about anybody else? Now he go the he minisha. And the ones too, where they under and where they chop under, and don't go my afford there. Yeah. The poor will have to do what? Keep quiet. If you don't get money, hide your face, fam. Hide your face. No class consciousness. So me, I don't support the removal of oil subsidy. And I'll tell you why me, I don't support the removal of oil subsidy. I'll tell you for a fact. Colonel Ahmed Ali. Yes, that's his name. I'm bad with names, but yes, that's his name. The former controller of General Customs. He went on in the Senate. Now, the customs oga knows what is coming in and out of Nigeria. Now, if you argue import and export with anybody, it is not with the Comptroller General of Nigeria. Because the, I mean, sorry, it's not with the customs boss in Nigeria. DG like Abi. Yeah, personally, I don't like the man. I don't like his attitude. You know? But the man has integrity on his side. At least as much as you can have being a part of the Nigerian system. And he said for Senate, since he does he said, me they go call anybody for NMPC. Me, he can't tell on the day where they import 60 million liters per barrel. Uh, I mean, 60 million liters of petrol a day into Nigeria. You never see a day with the import. So how are we paying subsidy for 60 million liters of petrol? It is not the consumption of petrol. It is not the, it is not the Nigerian people's fault that subsidy got so high. Not be we Nigerian people, they buy petrol, they hold them inside our house, under bed, under cooking pot, inside kitchen. No, not we, do, that, that, we didn't do that. Right, my people? The problem with subsidy is the corruption in the subsidy regime. Is the corruption in the subsidy regime. Anybody that wants to fix that, if they love the people and want to keep the people at least under less stress, say, okay, Muku, no die. Not be their job to say, eh, they want to remove the subsidy so we pay we are the ones paying for the crimes of less than 300 nigerian people femi falano said when chimokin was interviewing him nigeria is the only country in the world 
that will tell you that some people committing open fraud, smugglers, openly, that smugglers are too powerful to be brought to book. They are too powerful how? Because they will take gun to the president's house and open fire on him? Or they will raid the Senate and kill the senators? No! They are just too powerful because they are the friends of the, they are their friends. Imagine only Nigeria you can hear that only in Nigeria you will hear such such a statement. In any other country in the world, I say even Benin Republic, Benin Republic cannot hear that kind of statement. Only Nigeria they hear that statement. Not that we don't know what is happening, no. Mm -hmm. You see, the, I'm not saying Nigeria is doing something that we never see before. You know, I mean, every regime in this world, every administration in this world right now that is existing, more, at least 98% of them are corrupt. But the system is for the corruption never to be exposed. Because if that corruption is exposed, you pay for the crime and that job don't close. Uh -huh. So they don't expose the crime. The crime, they never expose them. You can get away with it. This crime has been exposed, overexposed. In fact, in 2012, in the Senate, the people that committed the crime were brought out, exposed. What happened to anybody? What happened to anybody? Let me read an article from that Sahara Reporters. Sorry. Let me read an article for you. Let's, I don't know if people can read it together. Sahara Reporters did an article in 2011. Sub, for subsidies come. Senate releases names of Cabal, December 12, December 2, 2011. Owando Oil, Corn Oil, African Petroleum, and MRS Oil are among the powerful players in the petroleum sector that have shared over 3.655 trillion between 2006 and 2011 in pursuit of importation of refined petroleum products. Owando Corn Oil, African Petroleum, NRS Oil are among The path. This was revealed. To, okay, sorry, that was the headline. This was revealed today in Abuja by the Nigerian Senate. Nigerian Senate. Not be Kalakuta Senate. Not be MOP Kedasu. The Nigerian Senate itself. Committee on Petroleum and Downstream Appropriation and Finance. Senator Magnus Ibe, the chairman of the committee, also disclosed that some hundred companies in the downstream sector and in construction shared over 1.426 trillion between January and August 2011 alone. Owando is owned by Wale Tinubu. Mike Adinuga owns Corn Oil. Femi Otodala owns AP, while MRS Oil is run by Aliko Dangote's brother, Sayu. Say you don't at her. Other key players named today include Pinnacle Construction Limited, as well as Integrated Oil and Gas, which is owned by the former Minister of the Interior, Captain Emmanuel Ihenacho. Ihenacho. The full list of their individual hall, as read by Senator Abe, is as follows. In 2011, please remember that one naira was hundred and uh, one dollar was hundred and fifty naira. With the reference to 2011, 
the company's name by the Senate and the amount of money they have received this year alone. <laughs> anyway, you guys get the gist of this article. You get the gist of this article. The problem we have in Nigeria and our forest subsidy situation is not what we did. It's not what we did as Nigerian people. It's what less than 300 people are doing to the whole nation. And they are, these 300 people are so-called untouchable. So what do you do? You touch the rest of the Mughals that are touchable. You've made yourself so. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, change your ways or else more will come. Change your ways. You must begin to now sacrifice for yourself. Okay, what are you... Now you are sacrificing. We're going to tell you now every time. Try and let's sacrifice our time. Just your time. Sacrifice some of your time. For the betterment of the nation. You say you are too busy chasing money. Now they're giving you what to spend that money you have been chasing around. You spend it there. You will spend it. And it's a, you will sacrifice there for nothing. For nothing. We tell you, come, let's organize. Come, let's try and struggle. Come, let's plan for our future. Let's, hey, they go fight me. They go beat me. They go lock me up. Is it only when you struggle that you will die or they will beat you or they will lock you up? Is that when we tell Nigeria, embrace socialism. They say, ah, socialism doesn't allow freedom. Are you free? Now that you're not a socialist, are you free? Where is the freedom in your capitalist country? Where is the freedom in your capitalist country? You only have the freedom to chop slap from police. Well, not me, shall I give me, I'll give you back. <laughs> chop slap from police. Police beat you anyhow. When they finish that one, uh, army come, beat you in one. When they finish that one, uh, uh, Nepal come, they take your light, you don't have water, a uh, trailer will come from on top of bridge, squash your car, you are changing your shock absorber at least four times a year. Just because I don't know, you people just refuse. You just refuse to calm down for one second. Calm yourselves. And realize that you cannot get out of this without losing something. You can't get out of what is going on in this country without losing something. So what are we going to decide to do together as a people? What are we willing to sacrifice for ourselves? We are always willing to sacrifice for the elites. They will increase water bill, you will pay. They will increase light, you will pay. You will you, be paying more. The services will be reducing. You will be paying more, we are investing more and people are still heaping more. Anyway, as soon as I see, I am still taking medicine. Hey, look at me. You can come and kill me. You cannot come and kill me. You cannot come and kill me. You can't come and kill me. You can't come and kill me. My very, I have a cousin by marriage. I'm not going to say her name. Very talented in what she does as well. And she don't tell me, she has to leave these people alone. They, will, they want you to, they want to kill you. And she told me that, not that they, they want, not because you, would, she said, not because they hate you. It's because 
I'm constantly reminding you of what you have betrayed, of what you can be that you choose not to be. And that is where the hate really is. Who is to say be safe? If all of us feel they suffer like this, they keep quiet. They feel they do all of us like this, we don't do anything. Where, where is it? Because I fell up again, he wanted to talk, saying he did one thing. That because I fell up again, he didn't feel safe, he talk. That's where the hate comes from. She told me to say, they will end up killing you. Because the hate is irrational. Mm -hmm. And irrational things can lead anywhere. Irrational people can do anything. Irrational people can... You know, they are the people that cut their nose to spite their face you know i mean so i've learned that but me go i'm stubborn i think blessing our stubbornness at this point what have been called stubborn i'm going to be more stubborn at this point i think it is actual it is actually stubbornness not be say anything because you people are not giving, you are not giving, you are not giving, you are not giving. Every time they play the same game, every time you guys act the same way, expect, doing the same thing, expecting a different outcome. Doing the same thing, expecting a different outcome. But Shion is the crazy person. You know, Shion is the crazy person. Shion is the crazy person, man. Shion is the crazy person. Anyway, that is my take on the four subsidy remover. I have no, absolutely nothing to say about Amy Fele's arrest. Hopefully, he can rot in jail for the rest of his life, if it's possible. You know, uh, we also now need them to go and arrest all the so-called money print people that the company that print because they say they printed that money in Nigeria. We want to hear from the printer of the money. How many did they print? Where did they share it to? We want to know. You know? I'm happy that this one, they started from the from Emefele. I don't know if you know, you know, but at least they started from Emefele. Oh, yeah, I want to know. Now, the next person is the person that printed the money. We want to know how many did you print? How much did you print? Where did you keep all the money you printed? When you give it to, uh, we want to know those things. Call up back everybody. Call up back all of us. Call up back everybody. Every everybody. Me, I'm not. I, I will not buy. You can never see me say they say poor man thief something. I'm lamenting for the arrest. Like uh, during answer uh, answers, where poor people they loot, where all of the they arrest the looters. I don't care about that. But when rich people loot. When the rich loot, who are the real looters? Now, finally, the same people that could not share Indomie noodles, that they did not even pay for, that could not share Indomie noodles and Gary to the poor people of this country, during COVID, when they go start shop for warehouse, when the thing they spoil, instead of they will give people chop, they rather watch everything spoil, jera, destroy. Are these the people that are going to take what is saved from subsidy and use it for you? Uh, no, tell me, please. Enlighten me. How people, where they hide Indomie noodles, people where they hide Gary, these are people that own private jets of millions, tens of hundreds of millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollar jets. Some of them have three. 
houses all over the world, in every corner, everywhere you look, that anybody might think that they would love to go. Are these the people that are going to now suddenly? Uh, we'll see. We will see.